welcome back to my channel. So for today's episode of Fossil Friday, I am filming in a different location, mainly because I don't know if you can tell, but uh, there is zero light today for me to film, and that's partially my fault, also partially not. I should have been more organised, but for those of you who don't know, I've started my second term of my Masters. It is done remotely, so I'm still in England for now, um, but it means that I have lectures 9am till 6pm, so yeah, once it hits 6pm, I can't exactly film outside. So I'm trying out my utility room. I apologise if the sound is a little bit weird because it it just sounds a bit more boxy than it usually does. So this is a trial and error experience. But for today's episode, I thought I would bring back a good old piece of kit, which is my mop bucket. And for those of you who don't know my mop bucket, I call this my DIY fossil washing machine. Um, it's, it works amazingly at cleaning just dirt and mud off of my fossils. So I have a tray here of some fossils I found pre-Covid that need a bit of love. So my Dremel is obviously on its way, um, I ordered it from Zoic Paleo Tools. So something like that. I will link it down below. For some reason I always forget their name, but they're a lovely um, family owned business. So if you'd like to get any fossil related preparation tools, I really recommend them. They're so friendly and helpful. And you know, in today's current kind of, you know, pandemic situation, I think it's lovely to support the smaller businesses. So I'll link them down below so you can check them out if you would like to get anything. But once my Dremel arrives, obviously I'll show you guys. So I'm rambling as usual, so let's get on with the video. So in this tray are fossils I found in Somerset, UK, and we've got a variety, they're not all ammonites, like I hope you guys are proud of me. So um, this is a Nautilus that I want to give it a bit of a clean, and then when my Dremel arrives, I will try and clean up the center a little bit. So it just looks like this, but it's nice and whole, it's all there, and I gotta say, I think this is probably my best Nautilus that I found, you know, it's complete. Um, so I'll, I'll show you a few of them and then I'll put my camera so you guys can actually see what I do to the mop bucket because you literally, it spins when I press the pedal, it's so cool, like I'll put it on the floor and I am a fashion icon today, like look at this outfit, yes it's a dinosaur hoodie and of course I've matched it with Crocs, yeah. The next fossil to go in my bucket is this ammonite, so of course there's ammonites, but I thought this one was a lovely piece because it's kind of an ammonite in the centre, so it's almost a perfect mantelpiece piece, so it's like, you know what I mean, it like stands on its own and has a lovely fossil on it, <laughs> if that makes sense, but it's very muddy, we can see here that it needs, it needs a good clean and I put warm water in my mop bucket so it should help break apart that mud very nicely and the spinning action using the pedal just literally cleans them for you, you don't have to do anything to them and I have tried it with fragile fossils, not like super fragile but it's never broken like a bellum night or something like that so top notch, I recommend. So this was just going to be thrown away and I saw potential and I'm so glad, I'm so glad I kept it, like it's just perfect. But um, I will show you guys in a minute. So then we've got, so these are just bags of bits and bobs. So there's some belemnites, ammonites, you can see it's literally just, I just walked along and I've put whatever I found in a bag. So it's in need of some cleaning, like a lot of cleaning. And there's also some nice brachiopods and bivalves. So that should be a nice one to clean up. I'm just seeing if there's any more exciting ones. This is quite a cool one. So this is also a Nautilus, but you can see it's been a bit deformed since it got deposited. So before this became a fossil, it obviously got crushed. So you can see like some of the detailing here of all the different chambers. So that's a really unusual piece. I love having like different versions of a fossil. So I'd have something like this next to the perfect Nautilus to show you, you know, the different preservation states of some fossils. So I like that. And there's uh, some more Nautiluses in this bag, but they're just little ones. And then I'm gonna kill this plant in a minute. <laughs> Keep grabbing it. And then this last bag is full of bits and bobs. <laughs> So you guys can have a look, there's a lot of belemnites in here, all very mucky, and there's a nice ammonite in a big chunk here. I don't know if you guys can see it through the bag. There you go. So very pretty. So I'm going to move my camera down now and we can start washing them. Okay, so I've just put the bucket on the floor so you guys can see, and then there's a pedal here, and if you look when I do the pedal, it spins here. 
So when I fill this with fossils, you'll see what it does, but it really cleans them. It's brilliant. So I'm going to put some in. So I'm going to put the little bag of bits and bobs. So this has shells, belenite, ammonite, so it should be a good batch to start with. So in they go. And then watch this. You can see all the stuff coming out into the basin here. And you just do this a few times and you let the water fill back up and then oh. so it's just using centripetal force but it's perfect for fossils like this that just need you know a good soaking it does the job brilliantly so after spinning these a few times i think they're done so obviously you could go and clean these with you know a toothbrush or something like that to really get in all the grooves but i find this works really well especially when i have so many to clean so I'm just going to let these ones dry and then I'll show you the outcome once I've washed everything. And here we have a shell. So you can see it's got both sides here. I think, is this a bi- I think this is a bivalve. It's not in the best preservation state. Is it going to focus? <laughs> nope. There you go. So you can see the ribbing along it here and the hinges at the bottom here. A nice piece though nonetheless. Let's see, I knew there were some more shells in here, so I'll show you those first. So this is a brachiopod. So you can see, got some lovely ribbing on it. Looks like that. So they just look a lot nicer without all the mud on them. And the belemnites, I will further clean up potentially with some vinegar. But for now, you know, just not having the mud on them, they look much better. So I will take the rest of these out and lay them out and then we can jump to the next batch. So now I've got some more from a bag to put in. So I've got this guy here, if it's going to focus for you guys. Nope. Yes. There you go. So this one already looks lovely, but it probably just needs a little wash to make sure. So you can see it now. Like how beautiful is that? So we'll just plop that one in. Then. I've got some really chunky belemnites here. So these were squid-like fossils, kind of similar to modern day cuttlefish that used to swim around in our Jurassic seas. So pretty cool. So this is the body chamber. So usually when you find a belemnite like this, this is only one fifth of the size it would have been. So these belemnites here would have been about this long or potentially a little longer. So it's quite cool when you find a fossil, it's only obviously the hard parts of the fossil. So you have to think about what it actually would have looked like with all its soft parts, which is kind of cool to think about. So I've got some more belemnites. Belemnites of all different shapes and sizes. And I'm just gonna pour the rest in. So I think after when I clean this batch, I'm then gonna change the water, because otherwise it's gonna get too muddy. So let's give these a clean. The first one is always the most fun. I like, I love watching the cloud of mud come off it. See how these turned out. Da, da, da. So that's what that one looks like. So that's the nice ammonite one that's got like the two in one kind of thing. So it's just basically brightened them up a bit. And this one was already beautiful, but now it's just got no mud in its grooves. And all the bellum lights are much cleaner. I mean, you can see a lot more of their detail now. So I'm just going to take these all out. You can see the mineralization of this one is beautiful. And just let them dry. And then we can see how they've cleaned up. The bellum lights really have cleaned up beautifully. I mean, look at this one. That is gorgeous. Just a few. I think that's all of them. This is a brachiopod, so we know it's a brachiopod because it's got the two different size valves. Whereas a bivalve has both valves the same. So you can see here, there's the hinge, and this one is larger than this one. So that's how we know it's a brachiopod, if any of you are wondering. But it's a lovely specimen nonetheless. So for those of you who don't know what a brachiopod is, it's, it's just a shell that you can still find on the beaches today that's got two halves to it. So sometimes you just find one of the halves because it breaks at the hinge and sometimes you find both halves. So kind of like a clam, that type of thing. I think these are 
all the lovely little ammonites. I've just got some fresh water to do some of these larger ones. So this was the nice ammonite chunk I showed you earlier. So these are kind of the biggest that you can really put in here because there is a mound in the middle. So it's got to be able to fit in the edge bit. And then this was the crushed nautilus. So we'll put that one in as well. And then I don't think I showed you this one, but this is a nice little piece that's got a belemnite kind of like stuck in the matrix. But I quite like how it's still got the rock around it. I just think they can look like really cute little pieces. So that can go in there as well. I think the big nautilus will be a bit too big for it. So I'm going to put in, this is a really cute little nautilus I found like a baby version so that can go in and then there's another nautilus which looks like this so this is also quite a nice specimen so you can see all the different chambers in this one if it focuses for you guys there you go so it's very nice it's got a lot of depth to it so i think once this is clean it's going to look really stunning so i think i'll leave this piece and the big nautilus i showed you earlier um, for the next batch so let's give these ones a whirl. So that's these ones done. I think this bigger chunk might need a go with a brush and in a slightly larger bucket because I think it couldn't really move much in um, my little mop bucket bit here. But it definitely cleaned it some, like a little bit, which is the main thing. This one's turned out very nice. It just kind of got all the mud out of the little gaps at the back. But I will show you these once they dry a bit better. Same with this one, it just has a bit more depth to it now. So yeah, so we've got the last two. Now I, I think this one's going to be too big as well, but worth a try. Yeah, look at that. That's like... <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I don't think the water can really wash it much. I'll have to rotate them a few times. Have a go. I've given them a few spins and it would have taken off any kind of like dusty mud but I think these ones might need a bit of a better scrub just to get stuff out the middle just because they couldn't like move around at all um, so I don't know if the water could do its thing but I mean they look better than they did so that's a good thing and this is the nice big one so this just hopefully will be ready for a bit more prep with some harder tools because this is a really lovely specimen it just needs a little bit of work to the center and then I think it will be good to go this is how they all turned out and I've got to say I'm really happy with how they are looking considering they just went through a mop bucket so they just are a lot cleaner for me to now work out what the next step is for them and this one turned out beautifully like you can really see in the center of this one it needs a little bit of a scrub like you can see there's still a bit of mud in there, but overall, like you can see completely underneath some of these chambers. Like it's a really lovely piece and this tiny one as well. So here is the little one. I think it's turned out really beautiful as well. You can see a lot of the detail now and nearly the center, like it needs a good scrub and potentially a little bit of a prep job with a nail. But overall, I think that was turned out really lovely. And then we got the ammonites, which I think are just a bit clearer now. And then look at these ones, they've got like holes in the middle. I could totally make something out of those, but let me know if you've got any ideas. And then I absolutely love this one. Let's see if it'll focus for you guys. Camera. There you go. So you can see it's got the center there as well. So it almost looks like a baby ammonite within an ammonite. I think that's pretty cool. And then we've got all these wonderful bellum lights. So I need to prep these a bit further and potentially put them in some vinegar or something like that to just dissolve some of the excess matrix. And then I kind of want to put like a varnish on them to just make them look glossy because some of them are so beautiful when they're wet. Like this one in particular looked gorgeous. So I think having a shine on them can just help keep them looking at that little bit better and then these are all the different types of shells i'd found so we've got some smooth ones some ribbed ones and yeah it's just nice to find something different and i thought this one's really cool so let me see if it'll focus for you guys can you see it it's kind of like a flat shell but it's really gorgeous and it's still in its matrix but i think it looks lovely like that 
So no, really chuffed with how these have turned out actually. So I'm now going to put them into, I've got jars. So I've got jars for shells, belemnites and ammonites. I don't have a nautilus one just because I haven't found enough of them. And I think these ones are quite nice. So yeah, I'm going to go pop them in some jars. These are the jars I'm talking about. Now these have been featured once before, but I thought I would show you them again. So this is one of my ammonite ones. I do have two for ammonites just because well, you guys may have noticed why I have two Framonites. So they just look like this, and these are old coffee jars, but ideally I want to get ones like this one where they're like smooth glass, because I think where the like kinks are in the glass, it ruins looking at the ammonites inside. But they're temporary, they work perfect for it. And then I have a Bellumnite one. So this is a sweet jar, I think, that I got given, so I've put my Bellumnites in it. So I can fill this up a bit more with my new ones, so it looks like that. And in my, you know, future house, I, I want like big, you know, glass kind of cauldrons or um, vases of some sort to put like, you know, my favourite pieces will be on display. But then I've got lots of bits and bobs that I found that I really, you know, I love. They might be fragments, they might be broken ones, not quite perfect. And I think they look really lovely in a jar. So I'll show you this jar. So this is the kind of jars that I love the look of. They almost look like potion jars. But you can just see, they look so lovely filled with fossils. I think anyway, probably am biased. Only thing about this jar, there's nothing to block dust getting in. So what I did is, I made this when I was younger, I cut it out of a Sprite bottle. I've always been a bit of a strange one and always making things. Um, so I made this skull out of a Sprite bottle and some wire. And he's my dust block blocker. So yeah, I have a lot of strange things. I'll put it in front of me so you can actually see it. Ta-da! <laughs> it works really well, surprisingly. So that's that. And then this is my very sad looking um, brachiopod and bivalve jar. As you can see, I'm lacking a few. You know, there's a few in there, but uh, needs a bit more collecting, I think. But I think I found, you know, I think I have got a fair few brachiopods and bivalves. They're just in all my crates in, you know, my parents' garage that is currently filled with all my fossils. And I'm slowly going through all the stuff I find. But it does take a while to, you know, clean them all. Then you've got to see what prep needs to be done. And it's just getting through it all. But slowly but surely I will get there. But that's today's episode of Fossil Friday. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'm thinking over the next few weeks I've got some videos planned that coincide with my masters because I have to do like um, assessed presentations and stuff like that and they're on really interesting topics so I thought I would share with you kind of like as a practice so you know I've got to present them um, to my professors so I thought if I can present them to you it's a good good way to learn. So I thought that would be quite fun to do. And then I also, I'm planning on doing some Bella Nights dissolving in vinegar, but I'm gonna get like some stronger vinegar, I think, or potentially just stronger acid, um, and actually try and like dissolve all of my Bella Nights, not like completely, like just like the excess rock on them, and then varnish them, maybe. But that's, that's a plan for some point. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll link my social media down below if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Twitter. I'm not active on Twitter, like I'm, I have it, um, but I'm still learning it. So apologies, but if you'd like to follow me anyway, it's down below. But I'm very active on Instagram, so you can step, check that one out. But I hope you're all doing well. Look after yourselves and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. I know I just ended the video and I know I do this every week, but for those of you wondering, this is how Grassman's doing. He's got a bit of a crazy do going on, and I mean, check out the length of some of these strands, but he's quite happy just growing a crazy hairdo.